Hello everyone, this is an unusual little one-off vlog. I'm trying out a new format. I've already got a wash on today and this is my making plan for the day. I need to make at least one black snood there, medium one, and then I'm going to go on to more autumnal colours. I've got brown on the go and I think I might do some of this bamboo later too. Now I know these have had their detractors, but I've just had a couple of these and they are absolutely delish. I wonder if the people who don't like them might be a bit too classy for them. <laughs> all year round in fact I can remember in the winter it being all stiff with the frost <sighs> Lulu's gone all squishy because as you can see a neighbour's cat nearby and she can't deal with there being other cats in the world poor little Lou Are you okay Lou Hello, I thought I would just pop on for a super quick chat and just try something a bit different. See how we get on. Oh, you know, some of those days when you can't get your hair or makeup or anything right. I feel like I look about as rough as, well, as rough as a scrapyard dog. That's what I'm going <laughs> to I just can't. Oh, anyway, forgive me if I look horrendous but I don't seem to be able to do anything about it today um I filmed a few little bits and bobs here and there that I'm gonna slot in and, and see how we go so hopefully it'll be a bit of a sh it will be a bit of a shorter one today I if you haven't been here before I haven't even said hello have I how rude um my name's Tanis I'm a crafter mainly a knitter and I live down in the south of the UK in Hampshire, not about a 10 minute drive from the coast. I live here with my partner and my little cat Lulu, who um, you'll see on one of the clips. She's a bit stressed out at the moment because um, one of the neighbour's cats is sitting on next door, but one's conservatory roof and she is furious that there are other cats in the world at the best of times. And if one comes close, she gets really stressed out about it yeah so i'm supposed to be going out to um my knitting natter group this afternoon and i don't think i will because when she gets stressed she um starts over grooming so i keep a bit of an eye on her and she gets really upset and then she like she won't eat and oh, it's all it's all drama having a cat but 99.9% .9 of the time she's the cutest thing in the world i just i just worry about her because she's she's a sensitive little soul right then just very quickly i've got a shop on etsy called gin poodle where i mainly sell um, this one hasn't got any elastic in so it's very baggy um hairnets called snoods in a sort of 1940s style bear with me i'm gonna go and grab one hold on hi um so this is a finished one they have like a little bow on the top and you put them I'll just a quick demo you kind of you wear them on the back of your head this is an awful because i'm just <laughs> winging it you wear them on that sort of on the back of your head and you would put your hair in nicely in a way that i haven't anyway 
that's mainly what I make. I also make, um, oh, I shouldn't have done that, should I? I also make project bags for knitters. Um, I don't think I've got very many in stock at the moment. So that's that for that. Other than that, I have been mainly sock knitting. And I was thinking to myself, why am I so mad about knitting socks at the moment? And I think it's dawned on me on the 29th of October that it's Socktober, isn't it? So all the socials are full of pictures of, of socks people have made. Plus it's, I can't speak today, strictly sock season. So and I take part in that. Gosh, my throat is quite, I work from, I've said this before, but I work from home for um, a company, but I also work for myself. So in the mornings I work for them, and then from by about 10, 11 o'clock, I start really early, about seven in the morning. But by about lunchtime, I'm done, and then I go on to work for myself. So I don't actually see people in real life very often, apart from when I go to knit group, um, and obviously I've got my partner and the cat, so I don't talk this much usually. <laughs> so it makes me go a bit croaky. Anyway, yeah, I've been on like a massive sock bender. And I've just got to the point now where I've started to think that I don't want to be endlessly knitting socks anymore. So now I've got cast on itis and I'm trying to talk myself out of doing casting on the, cl the clapote. There's a clapote knit along going on, which was apparently a viral scarf back in the day that completely passed me by. But I quite like the look of it and I've got the yarn for it. So no real, real reason not to do it other than the 27,000 whips I've already got. So yeah, I'm a, for my own business, for my gym poodle shop, my snooze, I'm making, I'm trying to concentrate on doing some autumn colours at the moment. So blacks are given every day brown and then next i'm going on to this nice little caramelly beigey trench coaty kind of color but that's that for that shop um a little bit of chat do you like this shawl i've got on i absolutely love this i made this god knows when it's really simple and i don't know who the yarns by and i don't know what the pattern is but I wear this a lot, like a lot, a lot. I do that was a ghost, almost a ghost of Scylla coming back then, wasn't it? A lot, a lot, a lot. Um, one for UK viewers. Yeah. And I can't remember what the pattern was, but I would make more of these. I'd make these in like loads of colors because it's so nice. It's just some really simple yarn overs. And it's got yarn over increases up the sort of spine of it. And it's so nice to wear. It just works really well. Anyway. I'm sure. Oh, and it's got some eyelet rows as well. Some quite big eyelet rows. So I've got a feeling it's... um, It's definitely four-ply. And, but I've got a feeling it must be knit on quite big needles because it's quite roomy. Not roomy. Do you know what I mean? Loose. Quite loose. Look, quite a loose gauge. But I think it's one of those things that it wouldn't really matter what gauge you did it on because you just get the fabric that you want. Anyway. Oh, and is never ending jumper right I finished that sleeve which looks enormously long to me but then when I put it on myself it's not that long because he's like six foot something so that's not too bad so I'm on the second sleeve of that now so please god that won't take much longer to do because I am heartily bored with doing this now um and then I've obviously just got to sew it up and do the neck band the pattern is an american brand called maypole it is on um ravelry and the jumper i'm doing is called it's called firecracker 
and it's in a DK yarn, which I feel in their picture looks a bit bulkier than what I'm making because I'm um, doing four ply heel double using um, Woody Knits British yarn, which is lovely. It's very sheepy, smells very strongly sheepy. And the mister loves that. He loves the smell of it. Every time I get it out to work on it, he's really always like comments on, on what a lovely smell it is. And um, I know he's pretty hopeful that I'm going to have it finished soon so that he can actually wear it. But I find I do find it quite dull to do. So <laughs> it's my um, it's my tipping point project. So in the afternoon when I'm working, I have tipping point on. And I work on my um, temperature blanket. I do four rows of my temperature blanket. And then the rest of the hour I spend on that. So at least I get something done on it every day. Even if it's only two rows. That's two rows marked off, isn't it? So, other than that. Oh, I've got some scrappy socks. Well, I had all this bag of all these like, little bits and bobs of all my blues, but also thrown in randomly some sparkly rainbow yarn, which I absolutely love. And I thought, oh, I'll make some really interesting he helical striped socks. But then it turned out that I had, because this is all I have of the navy blue. That's roughly the size of it. I've got another sock that I've cast on, but I've literally just done the cuff. The cuff. So that did that whole, it's a shorty sock, obviously. Oh, maybe I should go and get my sock block, because that would be a, yeah, that would be a move, wouldn't it? Hold on. Back again. I feel like I've come over all, like, um, weirdly formal. I'm going to go and get my sock blockers. And that is what I've done. <laughs> oh, and now I've got them all tangled up. Oh, dear. Oh, I'm just having one of those days, you know, when you just get all fuddled about everything. Oh, that's better. Oh, look at that. Yeah, they're lovely. I, was, <laughs> I wasn't imagining them to have more more colours in, but well, I think that's a bit of a triumph. It's a two by one rib, and that's seven rows. And then I did five rows before I started ye olde heel flap and gusset which is my favourite again now. And you know what I love? I love the, sh the that bit of heel flap and gusset. Oh, I just think that looks really nice. Yeah, super pleased with those. I'm on to the second sock, so hopefully they won't take much longer. But I mean, it doesn't matter if they do, does it? I mean, we're in no rush. I'll see where I feet this time next year, hopefully. Oh, I'll show you my Strictly socks. In my little Joe, uh, my Pickle Lily yarn, soft yarn hole bowl. <laughs> and my Pickle Lily sparkly DPN holder. For these are my Strictly socks. And they will be sparkle. So these I've used a jelly uh ro no not jelly roll rose city rollers pattern basically i've based these on just done the you oh, i haven't sewn the ends in but you yeah oh, you understand about ends don't you um so i've done a neon roll neon pop roll for the cuff which i love because um i quite like dm shoes and they look really cute with dm shoes and then the yarn, which is the best yarn in the world. I appreciate that's the best yarn in the world and you really want it. But that's, um, it's an I Knit London, one of the uh, yarns that Gerard of I Knit London died years ago. So it's been in my stash for a long time. And of course he doesn't die anymore and the shop's not there anymore and all that. Again, look at the gusset, lovely. Um, so yeah, so I only work on those when I'm watching Strictly, when I'm watching It Takes Two, or if anyone from Strictly appears on something like The One Show or This Morning or something like that. Not that I watch it this morning, so it doesn't really make any difference, does it, if I turn up on This Morning or not. Although Alison Hammond's on it this week, and I love her. I 
really love her. Um, three more things to show you. I've literally, I've got these are my current whips all in one go. This is the, it's a top for me. It's a summer top for me. And yep, it's October, but this has been on the needles for years. So I'd like to get this done. It's going to be a bit too big for me. But I think I can just wear it, you know, slopping around with jeans and maybe I can kind of like French tuck in and that, that might look nice. So it's the, what's it called? The Jenny Flower Tea. I'm going to try and do longer arms on mine. At least I like them to be at least bracelet length. I really like them to be full length. I don't know if I'll have enough yarn for that. But I also want to make the body a bit longer because I am not a fan of the trend for everything being cropped. Because I'm busty, cropped things look horrendous on me. It just makes me look like an amazing block woman. So I need things to be at least um, just below my groin level. To the tops of my thighs I need tops to come to or even mid thigh ideally because then that kind of just kind of even you know lengthens everything out and just makes everything look nice I mean I just won't wear cropped things so I've always got to do a little bit of finagling with the old yarn allowance hold on this cup's lovely isn't it it's from Asda three pounds fifty Sorry, I always drink with that finger out there and that's a naughty finger, isn't it? Yeah, I love this cup. Every time I use it, a mister always says, oh, that's a really nice mug, isn't it? Well, I like your mug. And if he thinks that I'm going to buy him one so that we can make, be mug friends, he's mistaken because that's going to, I want to be the special one. Speaking of him, this is a pair of socks I'm making for him with uh, Dragon Hill Studios yarn see what i mean about it being all too socky it's only the first one it's giant and i'm pretty bored with doing that too that's a two by two broken rib so one row two by two rib one row of plain and apart from that it's just a really a vanilla sock but i love dragon hill studios yarns and he loves this colorway which was a bit of a gamble on my part which has paid off and now all I need to do is, a I don't even need to do much more on the foot of this one. And then I'll have that toe done. And then I don't suffer too much from second sock syndrome. I get kind of spurred on by once I finish one sock. That makes me want to get the other one done. Now, last but not least, these have been on my needles for a long time because it's a lace pattern. And I find it quite hard to find the time to be able to concentrate on doing them. This is another yarn that was dyed by Gerard at I Knit London. It's really, really lovely and it's absolutely perfect for these. These are the Sandfire socks by Helen Stewart of Curacy Handmade and she does her Sock Society thing. It's either every year or every other year. Anyway, I signed up to it one year thinking I was gonna make, keep up with them all and I absolutely didn't. And now here we are, 15 years later, <laughs> still on my needles. But they are really lovely. Oh, actually, once we're on the blocker, they look even nicer. Look, they've got this lovely, lovely, lovely stitch pattern. And this yarn's over And look, I did um, a short row heel, which I regret because I don't, they don't, it's not come out particularly nicely. But it's ribbed at the back and then it has this lovely texture pattern which is hard to see on screen because of all the colours but in real life it's absolutely perfect and it works really well and it does look like the fronds of something growing through water really lovely but as I say I have to slightly concentrate on it <laughs> so it's not great for doing in the evening when the mister comes home from work oh and I'm doing it on short row short circumference needles which I hate 
So that's all conspiring to make these socks a little bit unloved. But the colours are so lovely. And once you get going with a pattern, it's so pretty. I do really want the socks. But what can you do? What can you do? Well, you could pull your finger out and knit that what you could do, but Oh now I've lost the what have I done with that? The bag that they live in. Yeah, there they are. So yeah. It's really socky, isn't it? You can see why I'm a bit bored with these socks now, can't you? I am a bit. So yeah, I haven't got anything else to show you uh, knitting-wise now. Um, I'm still dithering about whether I'm going to go to my knitting group. It doesn't start till two, so I've got ages to decide. But it rained all day yesterday, so Lulu's a little bit stir-crazy from being shut up all day yesterday. She doesn't go beyond our back garden, but she likes to go in and out, in and out, in and out all day. So I might stay in. Because I also really like staying in. Um, this is my current read. I'm reading an audio book as well. I'm reading um, The Baroness by Hannah Rothschild. And it's her biography of her aunt, Nika Rothschild, who had a very interesting life where she, um, in her late 20s, decamped to New York to hang out with jazz musicians. And um, But it goes way back. You know, I mean, they, they have a lot of money now and they had a lot of money then, but they started off really, really tough times. It's so interesting. I mean, there's an awful lot of that stuff where money doesn't protect you from things like mental illness and just being unhappy and having a, a, a tough life. Um, in Not a tough life in that they do have luxury and everything, but they're very, very restricted in what they do, especially the women. So, you know, it's not all sunshine and roses. It's a, and uh, Dame, I'm sure she's a Dame now, isn't she? Dame Hannah Rothschild actually reads her audiobook herself and she has got the most perfect ASMR voice. And you could literally, she could tell you it was the end of the world and you'd be like, hmm, probably time to put the kettle on. So, yeah, I definitely recommend that. And I also massively recommend this, The Widow by Fiona Barton. Fiona Barton. <laughs> Um, it's basically it's a story about it's a novel about a woman whose husband has died suddenly he literally gets run over by a bus you know the way we all joke about like oh you get run over by a bus tomorrow well he does but he's a bit of a git um, but that's, she's not had a great marriage because he's quite con he's really controlling anyway you only find these little bits snippets out piece by piece and it seems like he was accused of abducting a toddler years ago and i think the general public thinks he got away with it or he may even have been to prison i don't know there's something shady about him but he because he suddenly died it's revived all the press interest in him so the press have come after her and she's she's ended up being sort of railroaded into staying in a hotel um and giving an exclusive to a journalist which hasn't she's only just got to the hotel now i'm like nearly a hundred yeah i'm nearly a hundred pages in it's it's but it's so good it's like a proper like you really want to get get back to it so i'm like rationing myself to only like a couple of chapters a day so that it lasts really love it and but the thing that i think the the twist is she's going to sell her story about her ex her dead husband but it's totally up to her now what that story is isn't it there's no one's going to contradict her he can't tell her what to say because I think he has really controlled everything in her life. So it's up to her now whether she paints him truthfully or not. And then I think you have to work out, you're going to have to work out of yourself what she's doing. But it's really good. Love it. So definitely recommend that. Um, I'm not sure when it's published. My book, my version is, is quite yellow <laughs> and has been around the family. So, oh, 2016, not that bad, is it? Not for me. Anyway, I think I might love you and leave you now and think about what I'm going to have for lunch. I've had soup the last couple of days. So now I'm thinking I might have some filth. I might have uh, soup noodles, which is absolute filth. But I love them. 
I'm having a bit of a filthy week, aren't I? Miss is off work from tomorrow. He does shifts. So um I'll have to I'll be eating normal food. <laughs> that I wouldn't be embarrassed to eat in front of another adult. <laughs> We're going out for lunch tomorrow though. We're gonna go and see um a film. We're gonna go and see a matinee version of um One Life. It's the story of I think he's Nicky Winton. Winton, is that it? Do you remember the the programme That's Life that had Esther Anson on? And they had an episode where this guy's in the audience and he's rescued six hundred Jewish children in World War Two. Um evacuated them to, to the UK. And they say to the audience, is there anyone here who has reason to thank Mr. Winton? Or was it anyone here, one of, one of those children? And the whole audience stands up. It's like 300 people or something all stand up. And it's so, oh, I really make, honestly, it's really moving. And anyway, this is a film about him, about what he did and, you know, and I think that's, I think it goes right up to that point too. Anyway, I'm really looking forward to it. Even though it's going to be really sad, I'm so looking forward to it. Because it's going to be a really good film. And apart from that, I don't have any plans. I might go for a walk along the beach at the weekend. If the weather's nice. I'm thinking about painting the tiles in the kitchen. And that's about it really. Oh, I'm getting a, sorry, I had to peer at my phone because I'm getting a scam call right now from Manchester, which is nice. I usually take those and, and ask them if their mother's proud of what they do for a living. Right then, I'm off and I shall speak to you again soon. ta -da.